Hello there, God bless you. Welcome to another edition of Practical Theology. Today is Monday, March 9th, 2020. In the past editions of Practical Theology, we have been looking at the importance of putting God first in all we do. We started looking at what to do when you are torn between doing His will, that is God's will, and doing His will, that is the will of man. This series was inspired by a question one of our listeners submitted, which read, How can I handle my love relationship the right way that is pleasing to God? I feel carried away and I need help to have a healthy relationship with God and with my man. Wow. I read a deep love for God in this question. I read a deep desire to do the right thing. And I also read a deep love for her man. You know, this is such a wonderful place to be. But I also know that it is not easy to get it all under one roof. Why? For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. This is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. My dear brother, my dear sister, many times the desires of the flesh are very far from the will of God. We have seen the importance of spending quality time with God in prayer and meditation. But how often do we prefer to sleep an hour longer after the alarm goes off rather than getting up to pray? How often do we prefer to scroll up and down on social media even though we actually intended to read and meditate on the scriptures of the day? How often do we prefer to stay up late into the night watching a movie, even though we know we should go to sleep so that we can get up early? Then, coming to relationships, how often are we tempted to do what everyone else is doing, even though we know it is contrary to the will of God? And if we come to our case study, that is the case of two young people who love each other and are looking towards the future together, it gets even trickier. Or do we say more tricky? I don't know. Okay. What do you do when you want to go to church or Bible study, for example, but your fiance or your partner wants to spend time with you or just doesn't like the fact that you're spending all this time with godly things? So what do you do when you want the two of you to pray together, maybe in the morning or at the end of the day, but your partner doesn't want to and prefers both of you to be doing something else? What do you do when your partner does not understand the calling of God upon your life and is doing everything to stop you from following God's plan? So in this case, you know that going to church or insisting on praying or going on with your calling all alone could mean the end of your relationship. You really love him and can't imagine your life without him. But at the same time, you love God and want to continue drawing closer to him. Again, it feels like it's either him, that is God, or him, that is your man. So what do you do? My dear brother, my dear sister, the struggle is real. I have been there too several times. Struggled with pleasing God and pleasing my boyfriend. I struggled, fell, got up, fell again and again and kept struggling. Then I finally got married and the struggle is still real. My dear brother, my dear sister, the Lord says in Luke 9 verse 23 that whoever wants to be his disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow him. Yes, sometimes it really feels like a cross, or should I say a couple of crosses all at the same time? But with time, I have come to realize that though it might be challenging, in fact it is quite challenging, it is possible to please him that is God and please him that is man. It is possible to have a healthy relationship with God and still have a healthy relationship with your man. With your woman also, if we look at it the other way. We'll be digging into this in the upcoming editions. But for today, I just want to share my top two tips with you. They are prayer and prayer. (laughs) So number one, pray together. There is the saying that the family that prays together stays together. Have you ever heard it? And you can always replace family with couple. 
The more you pray together, the more you will be on the same page when it comes to understanding and doing the will of God for you, both on an individual level and as a couple. Number two, pray for your partner. Yes, whether you pray together or not, it is very important that you pray for your partner. One of the best decisions I ever made was to take time out to pray for my husband using the book, Power of a Praying Wife by Stommy O. Martin, life transforming. And for the men, you can also get Power of a Praying Husband by the same author on Amazon. My dear brother, my dear sister, let us call it a wraps for today. When we return, God willing, on Wednesday, we will look at another area which is a big source of strife, pain, and struggle in relationships today. Stay tuned. Points to ponder. Can you relate to any of the above mentioned scenarios? Do you find yourself sometimes torn between pleasing the spirit and yielding to the desires of the flesh? What advice would you give to a sister who is struggling with doing the right thing and pleasing her man? What is your main takeaway from today's meditation? Do you have any inspiration, question, or testimony to share? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another wonderful day. This is a day that you've made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I want to thank you for the gift of life and for your grace, which keeps me going day after day. Thank you for calling me out of my darkness into your wonderful light. As I continue on my lengthened journey, this is the 11th day, you call me into a new walk with you. Grant me that grace to let go of the distractions and follow you. Search my heart, Lord, and show me all those areas in my life which are leading me away from your light. Help me, Father, to always put you first in my decision making. And should this lead to challenges and tensions with my loved ones, may you show me the way forward. And here you can mention a particular area of struggle. Grant us peace, O Lord. Let peace, love, and justice reign in our world, in Nigeria and Cameroon, in Syria and Afghanistan, in Kenya, and in all places where there is war, where there is strife, where there is injustice and animosity. Heal the sick, provide for the needy. Take away our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. Through Christ our Lord we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. I'm Laura Tinzo, and you've been listening to Practical Theology. I just wish to thank you all for taking time out to pray for me, on my birthday, I had a wonderful day and I really felt your love and I felt your prayers. If this edition of Practical Theology has blessed you, please go ahead and bless someone else by sharing. Keep the fire burning. God bless you and have a wonderful start in the new week. Bye-bye.